So in today's video, I wanted to cover off the Hydro Wales Mining Club project and the fact that they've just released their version two white paper, which is rather exciting. I'm gonna walk you through it today. Let's get into it. Okay, so the Hydro Wales Mining Club is a Bitcoin mining project, primarily, at least that's how it started life, which involves the team basically buying lots of cryptocurrency miners, i.e. ASIC mining rigs, and putting those into good effect in order to mine lots of Bitcoin and make lots of revenue for its holders. And it's an NFT project, so it's really simple. Basically, you buy an NFT and then you are entitled to rewards in the form of how many NFTs you have. The NFT values are all equal and there's only 9,999 NFTs available in the entire collection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the white paper. I'm just gonna show you some really exciting prospects, which I think make this a sound investment opportunity. Not financial advice, that's just my opinion. So in the golden summary section, they talk about you know using hydroelectricity, which is one of the main core staples that the team have put together. Basically, they'll put their cryptocurrency mining rigs into this hydroelectricity type environment which is basically more sustainable in terms of electric cost. It's not 100% sort of renewable energy, but it's close to it and there'll be different things that they can do in the future to improve that. And what they're estimating is that they'll be able to mine approximately 4.5 Bitcoin, which was underestimated. I think in the previous white paper, it was something like 3.2 or something like that. Now that's really powerful. So what that's gonna mean is that every month they're gonna be able to mine 4.5 Bitcoin. And to be honest, what was surprised about this white paper is this is a very, very small part of what they're gonna offer going forward and we're gonna look at that now. So firstly, the team, they have four co-founders, which is Sam, Adam, Anderson, and another Adam. And they're all kind of part and parcel of the team. They also have a dedicated legal advisor through a company that they have on retainer to look after them in all ventures that they accomplish. I've had conversations with Sam personally, um, and I've listened to him on a lot of AMAs and along with Adam as well. And they are doing a fantastic job. They've got some really exciting stuff that's going on around merchandise and some other cool things, not to mention all the other projects and revenue streams that they're looking at, which we're gonna get into now in the white paper. So just to touch on the NFTs, effectively they are in just approaching phase four which I think kicks off on the 19th of July, right? So the phase four mints, and there'll be 4,999 of them at a cost of $450 equivalent in ETH. We're on the Ethereum blockchain for this, and effectively, if you want to mint one, you'll go to their website and you'll mint it with some Ethereum. Just make sure you have enough for transaction fees if you do that, or they can be expensive depending on how busy the network is. So during the phase four giveaway, which is 4,999 NFTs, as we talked about earlier, they will be doing a 50K giveaway to random NFT holders, and they're gonna purchase another 100 25 miners and we're going to get into the detail of the miners a little later on but they are really powerful and that is exciting to see how many they're putting in you don't understand how much this can hash and this can build so it's really powerful and it also talks about purchasing land in the sandbox for our community so if you're into the metaverse and things you will have land to build your estate on or whatever it is in the metaverse i'm not really into metaverse yet but i'm looking to get into it and the fact that i'm going to have some free land to do so is brilliant. Uh, just to let everybody know on the call, I actually have a phase three NFT because I got into this project slightly later than I'd like to have done. Um, and I'm actually looking to mint a couple of the phase fours because I'm really excited about what the project's offering, as you'll see in a minute. Over the next six months, they're gonna be doing a lot of app building. And they kind of lay this out here really comprehensively about what they're going to do. And that's because for the first six months, you won't receive any payments at all from holding the NFT. So what they're gonna do is compound and use that compound to build. So normally what would happen is 33% of the the earnings would go to you as an NFT holder. 33% would go to a community wallet, which is used for investing in other protocols and things like that. And 33% would go to like kind of treasury team salary, that kind of stuff. So what's gonna to happen to start with is 60% of that or 66% of that is gonna be going towards building the world out basically. Because as you can see here, there are a lot of things to build and we're gonna go through them briefly now. The first thing they're talking about is having a buying, swapping and bridging cryptocurrency app. So in typical DeFi projects, think of this as like swapping currencies between one another, being able to on-ramp, buy things in, and potentially bridging between different blockchains, which is gonna be really powerful. They've got this really interesting feature, which I'm curious to learn more about, which is called the One-Click Smart Contract Deployer and Management app. That sounds interesting. And again, I think anyone who needs help with smart contracts, these kind of tools will become really valuable. They also talk about an escrow app, which is about effectively locking up funds between two parties who might want to transact with each other based on conditions. So a good example of this would be if you were buying a house and you're obviously buying it from somebody else, you, you know, they might need to do something, you might need to do something, and only when those conditions are met do funds and keys and things get exchanged and things get moved. So that's what an escrow kind of service would do, and they're gonna have an escrow app with kind of services on there for that kind of stuff, which is interesting. And also a portfolio management and alerting app, again, to support community members on knowing what's going on with their portfolio and being alerted when prices dip between 
levels. We've all used free ones like Coin Market Cap and things and tried to set up alerts, and they don't always tell you when you need to know things. So I'm quite excited about that. It's quite good. They talk about the Hydro token. Now, Hydro token is going to be the token that they use on their ecosystem, and they've got to. They're going to be working out the tokenomics coming up, um, how they're going to do it via economics, security, and then there's obviously a testnet and a mainnet. So, in effect, they're kind of launching their own blockchain. I don't know if I want to quite call it a blockchain, but certainly there'll be sort of tokens within their ecosystem that you can use for different platforms, um, investments, and other things like that. So it's quite clever. There's a launch pad, so they're going to have a launch pad, and launch pads are very powerful for projects looking to get started. So if you want to push your project out to a wider audience on a given blockchain you know especially on ethereum where it's probably one of the busiest blockchains you know ever then i would say there is some big opportunity to putting something on there in terms of a launch pad and if we can earn revenue from that which is kind of what would happen then that would be great and obviously coming with that would be a management team uh, and they're aiming to launch one project on it, which is cool. They also talk about a service marketplace. Now this is clever, and I really like this because I don't think anything like this really exists at the moment. So typically you would go to Fiverr, Upwork, peopleperhour.com um, if you're looking for resource to, I don't know, do graphics design or video editing or whatever it is, right? And the same with kind of blockchains, you know, if you wanted someone to create some tokenomics or whatever, you might go to some of these services or you might go to a specialist company and hire them instead. So the service marketplace is probably designed more for people who are involved in blockchain, who are looking for a smart contract developer, who is trusted, who is certified or whatever it is that you need to do in order to be able to deliver that service. So that sounds quite cool and again presumably we can charge uh, sort of service fees on top of that which will again give more revenue for Hydro Wales token holders. Now we talked about the, the NFT utilities already, so there's Bitcoin mining, there's a community wallet for other stuff. They give you access to free masterclasses, so if you want to learn about uh, security in blockchains or how to invest or strategies for dollar cost averaging, all that kind of stuff, they do do masterclasses, which I think is very cool. There's some real life events, which they call fun but educational. Hopefully there's some alcohol involved, we all like a drink. They talk about a P2E game here as well, which is really interesting. I don't know what that will be yet, but that sounds very exciting and probably Probably quite time consuming so it'll be interesting to see what that's really going to be and how that's going to work. They talk about metaverse land access which we talked about early and they're also talking about early access to other projects so if they partner partnered with other projects you'll be accessible to be pushed into whitelists and things like that. There's other things that aren't really mentioned in here about the utilities you get for the NFT like the merchandise they give you so if you own one F NFT you'll get a free t-shirt, if you own three NFTs you'll get a hoodie and a t-shirt. They also talk about get, making sure that every Hydro Wales member has a Tracer kind of a cold wallet, a ledger that you can put all your crypto on. So they're really taking security and things seriously. They are security sort of entrepreneurs by trade, so it makes sense. So I really like that. And these aren't even mentioned in the white paper, so just some additional benefits for you. So here we go into the interesting stuff, right? Where we get into NFT rewards and projections. Now just remember any figures that you see here are projected. You know, it's hard to predict what will happen in five years. It's hard to predict what will happen in five weeks. So the fact that these guys are putting some numbers out, I would take every number with a pinch of salt, but this is kind of based on pre-existing markets conditions and future plans this is kind of what it could look like so over the next five years you can see the kind of revenues that potentially by holding an nft you could earn so in year one it might be a thousand in year two it might be three thousand so if you've got a few of these you could be making some sizable uh, revenue per year on these things and let's hope it's also going in year five when we can all earn a hundred grand per NFT. Now the revenue streams they talk about are quite in depth. They talk about cryptocurrency mining, there's project launch pads, there's DeFi reward investments, native tokens, NFT royalties, cryptocurrency investing, nodes and pool staking, and liquidity providing. And they've actually got a section for each of these which we're gonna go through now. This is where it gets exciting because there are things that you probably haven't visioned with this project that will be blow your mind in terms of revenue. So this is typically how they will split the cryptocurrency mining side. So I talked about this earlier. 33% goes to NFT holders, which starts after six months of them mining effectively. There's 33% goes to the community wallet, which is for other investments. And then there's 33% used for continued project development, hiring staff, growing teams, all that kind of stuff and you'll see some of that a bit later on and um, they talk about the s19 pro asic miners which have ridiculous hash rates and they've already got 120 so after phase four they're looking to get another 125 so we're going to have a monstrous amount of mining equipment. So they actually give some really good projections on the Bitcoin mining. They start to talk about, well, after the initial six months, this is the revenue we'll generate, and this is the net profit, 666. So presumably the third of that would go to, to us 
effectively. I think is how it works. But it starts to get even more exciting because if you start to look at the mining operations from year one and year two, we're up to 2.3 million, another 2.3 million, but I think that's due to a Bitcoin halvening event, which will happen. And then we get into year three, which is, you know, and we can see now we're kind of earning 8.4 million um, a year in sort of net profit from these things. And a lot of that is gonna to go towards your NFT in your wallet. So that's the standard stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that they haven't really, they've probably talked about this on AMAs quite a lot, but they haven't talked about the additional revenue streams that they're now putting in. And they're talking about other crypto mining. So altcoin mining in particular. What they're talking about here is potential investment and profit on Kadena mining, right? So investing in a number of particular miners to do Kadena mining. And then they're projecting the initial costs and saying, well, this is the initial this is basically the net profit that we'll get over the years, that kind of stuff, which is quite cool. So it starts to add up. It gives you all the numbers here and you can start to see how it's adding up in terms of revenue and opportunity, which I'm really excited about. They even acknowledged the nodes and staking pools concept. So, you know, actually maybe running validator nodes and staking pools and things like that. That is the way that people make a lot of money on blockchains, especially if you can get in early and they're looking to invest in some of that um, and running nodes and things like that would be quite safe in terms of investment opportunities. So they talk about here uh, in one particular example about DAG constellation nodes. So DAG is a very particular token uh, on the constellation hypergraph network and they're anticipating a big growth in that project and that they're gonna invest in that. Get so, so many nodes and then start to earn lots of profit. Again, there's lots of high numbers, which is very good to see. They also acknowledge DeFi chain as a note. It's not something I'm super familiar with, but it talks about the blockchain that is dedicated to fast, intelligent and transparent decentralized financial services um, and a focus on Bitcoin. It obviously aligns with the Hydro Wales mentality of doing that kind of stuff, um, putting those things in. And you can see again, the more nodes that you have, the more investment you get and the higher the price of things go as blockchains become more mainstream, the more revenue you can get. Now remember all of these figures are subjective to market situation, bull run, that kind of stuff. So it's very difficult to be super, super accurate on it. They talked about launch pads, launching projects. Uh, we talked about that earlier. They also talked about launching this project on the launch pad, which is about physical gold, which is a very interesting thing because it's a hedge against inflation or deflation because it's the only thing that you can really attribute true value to in terms of a country's economy, right? So it'd be interesting to see what this project is all about and how it could work and how they can onboard that to the blockchain. I'm quite excited by this because it's a very novel concept and some very interesting idea. So another interesting project that could be on the launch pad, and I've never seen anything like this before, is medicinal cannabis. Now, obviously, you know, if you're one of those and you like a doobie every now and again, I'm not going to hold you to that. That's fine, right? But I don't think it's about that. So it's, medic it's medicinal purposes, right? One of the founders on the team, Al Adam, has previously been the CEO of a medical cannabis project um, within the EU. And they've actually spotted an opportunity over in Thailand where they could potentially do something quite interesting and powerful in a market that probably isn't that sought after over there, or at least maybe it is sought after but hasn't been fully exploited yet. These all sound like exciting projects. I mean, to launch via blockchain. I mean, how cool would that be um, to be involved in, in businesses and potential revenue turning opportunities coming from that too? Adding to your Hydro Wales bag that you already have from all these other projects. I don't think I've seen such an array of projects in one, in one ecosystem, which is really, really cool. Now, they're also talking about DeFi and real world investments. So what do we mean by that? Well, this could be acquiring stocks in startups, purchasing gold and storing it for value over time. Uh, whiskey barrels, real estate. There are a number of real world projects that could be done, but there's also the DeFi projects with some really interesting returns. Um, if you look at things like EMP, so EMP money, I haven't done a video on this yet. It's like a tomb fork protocol with some interesting ways of doing things on there and some extra features like the detonator, some really innovative stuff. It's doing really well. And obviously yield nodes is another kind of project which is kind of node based. So this is quite cool and it kind of gives a breakdown of roughly what they could be in terms of balances and costs and investments and all that kind of stuff. The other thing which isn't talked about too much nowadays is being a liquidity provider. So if you know that people will want to often trade between Ethereum and USDC by putting a big bulk of a million dollars into a liquidity pool, we could earn 
basically 25% back per year for putting that liquidity there. So over a few years, this could be really powerful. Um, and that's just one liquidity pool example, right? If you've got spare interest, you can receive some massive rewards for doing that, right? This is really clever. And like I say, if you've got spare money sitting around, obviously just paying it out to people's wallets is fine, but if you wanna grow revenue even more, over a few years, this could be really lucrative, especially if you do it on the right platforms and with the right value of money and on the right pairs that you know are gonna be traded excessively basically. Now we've talked about a lot of interesting projects and concepts and what we haven't talked about is a real basic one which is crypto investing in the terms of you know hodl. You hold some bitcoin and in the future it will go up in value because bitcoin is projected to be higher in value. Now they've put together a table with all this stuff in which kind of explains what the projected growth is across things. I don't quite know where they've got the figures from from this but they've obviously done their research because some of these figures are quite precise in terms of number. So it talks about sort of showing you what the value of something would be in four or five years time and if it did that potentially you could just imagine the kind of revenue you can get. So if we can do a 4x in four years, 1x a year on just holding Bitcoin, that's incredible. And not only that, you could also use this as a bit of a benchmark to work out whether prices do follow that kind of suit. You know, in 2023, does Aave end up at $130? We simply don't know, but from a projection perspective, this is very positive and, and it is a really good strategy. I've done it myself, you know, when I was getting into cryptocurrency early on, you would invest in things like Ethereum and just hold it. And I got 3x on my Ethereum just by holding it. Uh, and they go a bit further because they actually go into, you know, 2020 31 where we're apparently looking at the value of bitcoin being worth 1.14 million dollars a token uh, is it possible certainly i mean you know right now when you look at the market you might not think so because it just looks like it will never get above 25 grand ever again but i think it will i think it's you know maybe the market's having a rally who knows this is quite exciting looking at all these potential coins and sort of what they could hold and that's just holding right it's just another strategy to earn a lower apr but something that can give you some value to the token hold now they talked about nft royalties earlier so we, we said we'd cover this briefly so it looks like that there's a 7.5 percent fee which will be set across multiple secondary marketplaces and royalties will be split in the following way. So 30% of royalties from a secondary sale of an NFT in the marketplace will go to the DAO community wallet and then we'll have some going in to invest in new machines, that's 30%. So that might be to support old mining machines that maybe are dying or struggling to operate anymore. We are gonna be hitting them pretty hard. And of course, there's the usual future development stuff. So basically, if you hold an NFT, you have access potentially to all these revenue streams. Now in the future, you may decide, I don't want this NFT anymore because I wanna cash in now and live my life or whatever. So you then might then sell your NFT. So the value of that NFT will have a price on it, which obviously you can dictate based on market conditions. And when you sell that, 7.5% of that as a royalty is sent back to the Hydro Wells Mining Club and 30% of that goes to the community wallet, which is what we use to invest in things. And 30% obviously is gonna go into existing mining machines and of course the other 40 percent is future development the vat is pretty cool so basically we're going to get sort of indirect benefits from somebody selling and then those benefits will start to be realized over time because there's now more money to invest in community projects in other things we talked about like the launch pad other things it's really clever um, and i really like the, the mechanism of that so that's going to add some value and i'm sure on the ethereum platform uh, on OpenSea and things like that. People will be trying to trade these to make money on them and we will get profit out of it just by holding on. So the Timple HODL approach will work here for these kind of NFTs. Now, royalties. So this is what it suggests the projected royalties would be in terms of trading volumes and things. So these are the projected royalties that we might have based on sentiment. Now, it's hard to say exactly who will trade what because if people are well drilled and they know to hold on, they won't sell. So therefore there won't be this kind of trading volume. So this could definitely fluctuate. But as the market goes up and down, as new opportunities surface and things like that, people may want to sell off one thing and buy another. There's no harm in that. This is what this mechanism is for, but it gives you some projected values on those royalties that we could earn as value. And you know, some of this is pretty insane. And it is all based on projected future costs as well. So obviously you have to bear that in mind. Now we talked briefly about the ecosystem earlier. There was a few things they talked about when they were going to build it. But what is cool with this is it talks about bridging, swapping, routing, talks about crypto tax and accounting, portfolio management and learning system, an escrow platform for kind of uh, contractual agreements and, and disbursement of funds and that kind of stuff, a service marketplace to hire blockchain developers or launch blockchain services or NFTs or artistry or whatever it is that needs to be there and smart contract builders. I mean, potentially these kind of apps would have uh, a big opportunity to trade massive volumes 
Um, they use an example of Uniswap here that's handled more than $1 trillion worth of crypto transactions since its launch in 2018 only. So we're barely four years in and it's, it's insane amounts of money going through this. So again, all of this stuff would ultimately come back into the hydro whale ecosystem to build and give more value, to invest in new projects, to give you more earnings and revenue. It's a very clever model and they've thought long and hard about how they can make extra money. And this is potentially, we could be earning a few hundred thousand a year. And what about a crypto tax and accounting platform? So when you come to do your taxes at the end of the year, it must be a nightmare in crypto, especially when you're trying to work out what you've lost and what you haven't. So what if you had something that made it really easy, something that structured that? And what if you had subscribers to that service who spend on a monthly basis? Well, again, that's going to go back into the Hydro Wales ecosystem. It's going to give us more revenue opportunities. The same with portfolio management and alerting. They've projected lots of high revenue. It's crazy to see how much money could be coming in. Even the escrow platform has lots of money attached to it. The service marketplace will be one of the biggest, and that's because lots of people will want to hire these kind of blockchain type services, people who can do Web3 agency setups, NFT agency setups, all this kind of stuff. Massive volume. I mean, Fiverr and Upwork had a combined revenue of over 780 million in 2021 alone. That's insane. That's so much revenue. And we could be generating similar volumes, you know, maybe not quite as high, but still, if you can market this correctly as a great, great place to provide services for blockchains and crypto projects and NFT projects, who knows how much they could earn from it. And they talked about smart contract builder. So this is something that people will want to get in. Um, and that's because co coding in Solidity and probably any other language that different blockchains use can be quite challenging. And it's a difficult thing. It's very, let's say it's sparse in terms of developers who are really good at what they do. Um, you may know a few in the space already, but it's one of those interesting things. And I think if you can basically build something yourself, it might open the market to more projects launching on a platform and using this kind of ecosystem, which obviously would have revenue ramifications for Hydro Wales NFT holders. So they've just given a final breakdown here in terms of numbers of the first six months or about six and a half months they talk here. So basically once the phase four mints out, when they kind of lock in, there'll be a six month period where this stuff will happen and they are aiming to make about 1.7 million profits in that six months, which obviously, you know, you've got to start sharing that out between 10,000 holders if they've minted everything. But you might make your money back quite quickly on your NFT and you don't know this could be even higher, right? That's, you know, so far they've continually underestimated and over-delivered and that's one of the beauties of the project. So kind of breaks that down here in terms of like, well, if they did mining profit, if they did noding, if they did the ecosystem, all this kind of stuff. It's whether they'll have all of these things in place remains to be seen. But I think having been on the AMA calls with them and listened to sort of the what's going on and what they're building and they, I think that they're, they're heading out very soon to Dubai to do lots of, sort of crypto conferences and things like that. They're going to be going on a bit of a round trip and kind of really exposing the Hydro Wells Mining Club, meeting investors, potential partnership opportunities. Who knows where it could go right with that mentality. So I'm really looking forward to it. Now it talks about the NFT rewards breakdown here. They're estimated about a thousand in year one. And then as you go through, it starts to talk about, okay, it might be 3000 in year two. So this is what we saw in one of the very, very early pages of this. And it just starts to break down how the numbers have sort of mathed up to that um, based on if you hold an individual NFT, presumably based on if they sold all 9,999 of them. Uh, it talks about year three, you know, 12,000 payout and all that stuff. So, but I think when you get to years four and five and upwards, it starts to get complicated. Um, you are looking too far out to project, but it does give a good vision of how it works. Now, one of the last things in this white paper is they're talking about the size of the team. So at the moment, this kind of five or six people maybe, altogether and you can see what they're looking to do so they need to now expand if they're going to do all of this if they're going to do you know altcoin mining if they're going to do a launch pad if they're going to do apps for portfolio management and whatever else right there's tons of things in here it's too big for the team to do alone so they're going to be recruiting for these kind of people in the near future over the next six months it says so blockchain developers to obviously build out infrastructure and things that you need support people to help onboard people maybe bit of community management kind of feel in there as well. This financial analyst to start working out, you know, are our predictions accurate in the market? How much can we really secure? And what are the best plays to go into? And of course, marketing existence, which is really just about, you know, plugging the project, keeping people invested in it, getting people aware of what we're doing and obviously helping uh, to, yeah, for visibility, really. So that's the end of the white paper. It's very exciting stuff. I really like what they're doing. I like the fact that they've got 
loads of different revenue streams, loads of different opportunities, and it's a 40 page white paper. So if you wanna sit down and work out some of the numbers, it's up to you. I don't, I wouldn't look too much into the numbers at this stage. It's very powerful to see what the potential is, but I think until we actually get into that space and we start getting there, we'll only really know what the market's like because nobody predicted this market crash that we're in right now. And it's only, I don't even think it's starting to recover yet, but I am seeing a lot of green today. So the last thing I wanted to point out was that the phase four mints will kick off on 19th of July. It doesn't say a specific time anywhere. Uh, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. So I'll have to try and dig it out. But get your ETH ready, it's about $450. It tells you here, that's the price and that's the date that it's going to be done. And basically the way you do that, I'll put this link in the description at the end of the video. This is the Hydro Wells Club website. And what you would do is effectively you come here and this will have the price of ETH, whatever the equivalent is, sort of pre-calculated. And it will have a button where you can buy basically. And then effectively you just do that, you pay the transaction fee and then the mint will be in your wallet and you'll be able to see it on an OpenSea collection eventually once they've all been revealed and opened. So it's really cool, it's very exciting. Obviously if you wanna get into it, you can. I'm gonna be getting in, I'm gonna be picking up myself an extra two if I can get in before the market ends. They typically clear the market in about a week or two. So you've, you've probably got time to get in. Just make sure you've got enough gas in your wallet if you are gonna do that. And like I say, I've already got one, so I'm gonna get two more, and then I'm gonna have three in total and be really happy with it, basically. So as you can probably tell, it's a very exciting protocol. They've got a really interesting concept behind their NFTs, and it's not just about Bitcoin mining after all. There's quite a lot of things that they want to invest in in the real world. They wanna create launch pads and an ecosystem of applications that are gonna to work together to give Hydro Wales holders something extra of value not only that, but to share those services with the wider world and community who want to operate on their systems and to get value out of them. And that's all gonna prove, you know, as extra revenue and growth opportunity for any Hydro Wales holder. So hopefully you found some form of value in the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe as always. If you like projects like this in terms of NFTs, then stay tuned to the channel because there'll be plenty more on offer. But with that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll chat to you in the next one.